Hi, this is Dr. Balanoff, and since the release of our video last week on how to reopen your office or do the soft opening for your office, we have been overwhelmed with a response. I mean, something like I've never seen. And interestingly enough, a lot of the comments and a lot of the questions are truly perfect. So I thought maybe we'd spend a little bit of time going through some of this stuff so that we really have an idea of what's going on. And I can't emphasize enough that the most important thing that you need to do in order for your business to survive is to make sure that your patients feel safe and that you have them first in your mind. Because eventually what's gonna happen is that's gonna to translate to patient loyalty, your commitment to these patients. Once that occurs, patients realize they're safe and you're committed to them, they're gonna to continue to come back to you and it's gonna be a slow process, but it's all gonna happen. So don't focus so much on the profit right now that you need in your practice. Why don't we start to focus on just maintaining our practice, keeping our patients safe and happy, and it's all going to work out for us. One of the first questions that came up are small offices, offices where there's a dentist, one dental assistant, one hygienist, and one front desk. And they were concerned about how they go forward trying to see hygiene patients because one of the recommendations we talk about is using the HVE during the hygiene visit. And of course, hygienists are worried about how do I hold an HVE, which is really difficult to hold with one hand and operate a cavitron or piezoscaler with a second. And what I've told all the offices is you've got two different ways to do this. The dental assistant who's working for the dentist can break away from working for the dentist for 15 minutes while you use the cavitron or the piezo in the patient's mouth. And the reason this is gonna be uh, affordable to you as far as a solution is because if you're truly staggering the appointments and you're giving more appointment time per procedure, whether it's a general dental procedure or it's a hygiene procedure, that dental assistant is gonna have time to float among the office. Now that's a short-term solution. The long-term solution is to actually hire a second dental assistant, one that would be dedicated to the hygienist to help use, hold the HVE during the cavitron or piezo portion of that appointment. And then that dental assistant can also help with the sterilization. So yes, it's gonna be a little bit of a commitment going forward, but I think what needs to happen is we need to have a second dental assistant in the short term. In small offices, that dental assistant will have to float between the dentist and the hygienist. The question of gowns, how often we change them. So here's what's being recommended, and I certainly recommend this as well. You have to think about your operatory where you're actually performing your dentistry as a surgical operatory or surgical operating room like you would have in a hospital. So in a hospital, when I would do a surgery, I would wear a gown and then when I left that operating room, I would take the gown off and I would go into a common area. That common area in a dental office becomes the hallways and other rooms within that dental office. So when you're in an operatory doing a dental procedure or a hygiene procedure, you're gonna wear the gown for that patient. If you're the hygienist and you need to get the doctor so that the doctor can do a hygiene check, you're gonna take your gown off, leave it in the room, go into the hallway, go to the doctor's where the doctor's working, knock on the door on the, on the doorway of where the doctor's working, say, I need a hygiene check. <clears throat> go back to the hygiene room, put that gown back on. The dentist, when he leaves or he, she leaves that the operatory where they're doing dentistry, they're gonna take their gown off, go to the hygiene room. There should be a separate gown for them in the hygiene room. They're gonna put that gown on and do the examination for the patient. Please do not wear the gowns in the hallways of the dental offices. The gown is dedicated to that patient in that room for that procedure. At the end of the dental procedure, whether it's a dental procedure or it's a hygiene procedure, the gown, the gloves, and everything get thrown away. As far as the mask that you're wearing, you can wear the mask in between other patients because you're gonna be wearing a face shield and the mask is between your body and the face shield and the patient. The face shield is really an important part to this entire procedure. And what you're gonna find out is that face shield gets quite soiled with the aerosol that we use either from a hygiene procedure or from a dental procedure. And that mask, that I'm sorry, that shield can be cleaned in between patients with soap and water. And you can feel very comfortable and it's a very effective way to go forward. You don't need to replace the shield other than after many, many weeks of using that shield. I hear this question a lot, which is air purification within dental offices and what are the rules and what are the guidelines and what should we be doing? There are no rules or guidelines. And in fact, it's not gonna help anything between um, safety between you and the patient. 
Because remember, our entire premise treating patients is making the assumption that the patients that are coming in to see us are COVID-19 positive. If we make the assumption that every patient coming into our office is COVID-19 positive, the most important thing we can do is to be safe using the PPE, the personal protection equipment. The air purifier in the operatory or in the office is a nice thing to have, but it doesn't make you any safer from the patient. It turns out that the COVID-19 virus is a heavy virus, and once it gets combined with an aerosol spray, it's gonna settle on the countertop and over the top of our patient. So if we make the assumption that everybody has it, once the patient leaves the operatory, we're gonna clean and wipe everything down and all the draping that we use to protect our equipment is gonna be removed and discarded. So although it's gonna make our patients feel safer, it may make the staff feel safer, and it's a great thing to do. I'm not dismissing it at all. Um, it kind of gives us a false sense of security about what it is actually doing. So if you have it, great. You should you order it? Certainly, I think it's a great idea, but you can certainly see all the patients you want to see without a HEPA, fire, a HEPA filter, air purifier, inside the operatory or in the office in general. One of the things we learned in dental school was how to use a rubber dam during dental procedures. I happen to love rubber dams. Now, there are other technologies out there, one in particular called an isolite, okay, which is a great idea. Something that's gonna retract the tongue, do a lot of saliva evacuation, and have fiber optics attached to it. It's a wonderful device that you can use, but nothing is as good as a rubber dam. A rubber dam truly isolates the patient and you completely, and all that really is being exposed is that tooth or that quadrant that you're working in. Now, of course, one of the challenges is, is can I use a rubber dam doing crown and bridge procedures? And the answer is yes. And what happens is you do a majority of the prepping of the tooth with the rubber dam on, and then the last thing you're gonna do is finish prepping the finish lines, either, depending on what you're trying to do, either super gingival, at the gingival collar, or subgingival. So you're gonna be doing a little prepping inside the mouth just to do the finishing of the preps, but the gross prepping of those teeth, the abutment teeth, can be done with a rubber dam on. Using a rubber dam is a little difficult in the beginning, but once you get the hang of it, it is amazing how much dentistry you can do and how much safer you're gonna feel not having that aerosol spray from the patient's mouth being thrown back into your face, even if you're wearing a face shield. So please start incorporating a rubber dam and all your dental operative procedures and start to learn how to use it doing crown and grid procedures. And of course, we've always used it for endo. So one of the reasons I suggest that we give more time per dental procedure is so that we can start to explain some of the new things that we want to incorporate in our office. So for example, a rubber dam. So as dentists, as hygienists, as dental assistants, we understand what a rubber dam is. But has your administrative assistant at the front desk who's confirming appointments understand what a rubber dam is and how it works? This is where you should take some time out and explain to your front office what a rubber dam is so that when they call the patients, they're gonna say, we're gonna be adding a new procedure to the filling that you need today. We're gonna to put this little piece of rubber around your tooth and the piece of rubber is gonna be held in by this little clamp and that tooth becomes isolated from the rest of the world and it allows the dentist to be able to see that tooth and only that tooth and work specifically on that tooth. This way, any of the saliva that you have inside your mouth is not gonna get blown back up into, your, up into the doctor's or the dental assistant's face. It's those types of explanations, it's that education that you're gonna to need to kind of put forth for not only the patients, but for your office team as well, that's gonna pay dividends. Because what the patient's gonna realize is that you truly have their safety in mind, that you're doing everything you can to keep them safe, and your office team is gonna understand completely that you're doing everything you can to keep them safe as well. So spend a little extra time, patient education, Staff education is really important and critical at this time.